I have been searching. Welcome to Following the Fire. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the wilderness. Just like Israel followed the pillar of fire and smoke, we want to take a new look at our beliefs and just follow him. And like Israel, we get it wrong a lot, we get lost a lot, but we're doing our best to, to go where God leads us. I'm Nathan. And I'm Steve. Don't you know it's all I have? Hello, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. This is a bonus episode. I thought I would jump in while Steve's away on the holidays and give you a recap of my year. But mostly I just wanted to say thank you for listening along. It's been so great to share this journey with you. You can always go to followingthefire.com, check out old episodes, look at uh, our bios, contact us there, uh, check out the book club. Uh, Lots of great stuff to do uh, while we are away on break and we'll be back sometime in the new year. I had been screaming Oh man, so 2021, it's almost one year now from the end of 2020, and yet the new realities, the social, political, religious, epidemiological realities of 2020, I kind of thought they were going to be over, but it seems like they've permeated every ounce of our lives instead, so rats. But lots, lots of big stuff happened in 2021. Early this year, Steve and I published the first episode of Following the Fire, and we had no idea where we were headed. Uh, we really didn't. Hence the name. Hence the wandering, wildernessy, uncertain kind of name. Uh, we were trying to capture uh, really our desire to to follow, our desire to go in in the right way, uh, but also our humility that we didn't really know what that was, what that is. And before uh, we ever came together, I'd been mulling over an idea for months, um, probably fueled by that year of divisive politics, some painful insights into church, also politics, into church politics. And my ideas centered on a just a forum. That's really what I was looking for, for two things that I really care deeply about. One was I wanted to have the kinds of conversations that happen at church during and after great Bible studies. You've probably heard me say that before, but in 2020, I just missed that. We were all social, uh, uh, socially distanced. I mean, Um, church was happening online. And so I went really from uh, leading and participating in a small group and uh, participating in classes at church on Wednesday nights and uh, Sunday mornings, and just all of that to just to a screeching halt to basically zero with a little bit of online church on the side. Um, but I just wanted those conversations, the kinds of conversations that happen uh, during class and after class at church. The second thing I cared about that I wanted to to create, I wanted to have those kinds of conversations, but not just with the people at church. I wanted to have those conversations with the kind of people who typically wouldn't find themselves in the pews. And some questions that I wanted to answer really for myself were, what if people at church had an opportunity to listen to people who had left? What if people uh, sitting in the pews heard the rest of the story when someone did leave a a church? What if they just listened to those stories instead of kind of making them up or assuming uh, what happened? And what if we occasionally heard the stories and perspectives of those who had never been churched, will never be churched, don't want to be churched, um, but uh, maybe whose lives we still impact by our words or our actions or our, our political stances or whatever it is. And what if those on the outside were welcomed in to listen to the weird conversations that we sometimes have at church or the, I don't know, controversies, um, but also the interesting takes on scripture or the compassionate concerns and questions that we sometimes ask. Um, What if people on the outside and people on the inside actually had chances to interact with each other? But anyways, back to early 2021, I was uh, incredibly lucky to somehow bring Steve on board 
I wasn't actually even trying to get him on board. I was convinced that Steve should start his own podcast show because I knew that I would want to listen to it. First of all, I've at least, I don't know, maybe spent a decade listening occasionally to classes that Steve teaches. Um, anyways, I didn't ask him to start a podcast with me. I told him that he should just start his own podcast. He should do a podcast. And after a few days or maybe a little bit longer, Steve, uh, came back to me and he told me that the idea was starting to grow on him but uh he said he would only do it if we did a show together then i was like rats that sounds like a lot of work When I was thinking about the two things I wanted a show to be, I wanted to bring my experience as an insider and outsider um, at various times or sometimes both at once. And I was interested in conversations that would help bring perspective and humility uh, to the religious and then perspective and worth to the worldly. So there you go. And uh, just in case there is any remaining shred of doubt, um, we started the show. Steve carries 100% of the technical know-how, the ins and outs of podcasting, and about 90%, sorry, 98%, I did the math and I wanted to get the numbers right. It's 98% of the behind-the-scenes effort is, is all Steve Martin. Um, the website, the Facebook page, the group, the recording equipment, the hosting platform setup and all that. Uh, most of the guest scheduling and all of the editing have all been Steve and zero, zero Nathan. I just get to uh, talk into a microphone. So pretty awesome for me, um, but pretty impressive. Uh, everything that Steve does. Okay. So we've, we've gotten to the end of this year. We really had no idea where uh, this year would take us, but I wanted to share the books that I've read this year many of which did not make the cut into the show, but several influenced questions or opinions I, I shared. And of course, I love reading books, a good bolster, a good bolster read to uh, bolster my opinions, right? Um, but this year, kind of parallel to my desire to have a forum that splits worlds and helps people share perspectives, I wanted to hear and understand voices that were different than my own. Um, in book form. So, um, and I know that Steve literally has the statistics to prove this wrong, but I also started the year wanting to listen uh, more than I wanted to speak. Um, turns out I'm a little bit of a talker, but I, I did have a desire to find guests and, and just listen to them and open up books and just listen and not necessarily have to... Uh, speak back or fight back or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to give you my book review of the year, and I separated my books into three categories. The first category in the spirit of A Christmas Carol, is go read it, everyone. Books that I think uh, just everyone should have. If, you, if you're getting last-minute New Year's gifts, grab all, all of these. Good for everyone. Second category is asterisk. That are, uh, those are books that aren't for everyone, but are for someone. They're uh, perfect for a certain person or kind of person. And... Uh, I won't spend much time on those other than to describe who I think would benefit from reading those books. And then the final category, just for me, those are the books that I loved that I suppose I won't force you to love. So we'll start with the most important. Go read it, everyone. Okay. Four books here. I'm, I'm mostly doing these in order. All right. So the first book, uh, this did not make it... Uh, onto the show, but I do kind of want to do an episode about it sometime once we get just the perfect guest. 
Uh, the book is Jesus and the Disinherited by Howard Thurman. Buy this book right now. Pause the show. Go to where you buy books and uh, buy at least two copies of Jesus and the Disinherited. And then read it right away as soon as it comes. It's a short book. It's a dense book. It's a, a book that Martin Luther King Jr. was known to have read and to have based some of his philosophies off of. It's specifically written with uh, race in mind, but applies to any disinherited class of human and just shows what the Bible and what the gospel means and meant to that kind of person. Jesus and the Disinherited. Go get it right now. Okay, the second book, A Moral Man or A Moral Man by Derek Delgaudio. I should have put this in the Just For Me section. I'm already breaking my rule because this really is the kind of book that really is just for me. The reason I liked it so much probably has a little bit to do of um, my 2020 and 2021 interest in magic and magicians that happened a little bit on accident. There's a love of storytelling and of, of writing and, a, and conveying the truth through story. And then a little pinch of Colorado Springs evangelicalism. So um, those are the reasons why it probably should have been in the Just for Nathan section. But I decided to put it in the Go Read It Every One section because it's just so good. It's fantastic. Um, but if you don't go get the book, then instead, please block out an evening if you haven't already. And go watch In and of Itself which is the show by Derek Delgadio. Kind of a magic show. Uh, maybe everyone's seen it by now, but if you haven't seen it, in, in and of itself, I believe it's on Hulu. Go watch it. Okay, book number three in Go Read It, Everyone. Why We Can't Wait by Martin Luther King Jr. You all know this uh, book because we, uh, we hosted an episode and discussed this book. Um, one of our very first guests, uh, Nicole McGloire, recommended the book instead of a different one we were planning to discuss. I'm really glad she did. I think my experience of reading this book really demonstrates um, what it meant for me. So as soon as I opened up the cover, Why We Can't Wait, I, I could barely put the book down. And I, was, I felt this anxiety, and I was so anxious to finish, um, but also just bodily possessed by the urgency of Martin Luther King Jr.'s tone in this book. It felt immediate. It felt like something needed to be done. And I felt that so strongly uh, that it entered my body and I actually had to pace around and read this book like I was literally in a hurry. So I, I actually read it walking really fast uh, around in circles in my neighborhood um, because I just felt like I needed to go somewhere now. That's how much urgency was conveyed in this book. Every Christian should read this book. This is, in my opinion, a book that should be part of a Sunday school education. And if we can get away with it, I think every American elementary age kid should, should be required to read this in, in school, uh, just in secular school. It really does convey part of the civil rights movement whose history is lost, I think, to the church. Go get it and read it. Also, just a plug, you've heard of the letter from a Birmingham jail. That's in the book, so um, it's, it's in there uh, along with some other great passages. Okay, final book in the Go Read It Every One section, A Church Called Tove by Laura Berenger and Scott McKnight. This also made it to the show, of course. Um, the premise of the book, church should be good, not bad. I think you should go open it up and see what they have to say if you agree with that statement, but sometimes maybe don't don't have an experience that has that has lived up to that. Next, I want to share some of the asterisks, the books that aren't for everyone, but are perfect for someone. Okay. I'll start with Affirming by Sally Gary. First of all, Sally Gary is for everyone. Uh, she was a pleasure to have on the show. I hope I get another chance to have a conversation with her at some point. 
I hope everyone has a chance to have a conversation with her at some point. But affirming by Sally Gary, of course, is her story of um, kind of late in life becoming LGBT affirming. Who this book is for is for Church of Christians, people who grew up in the Church of Christ, not because of the the LGBTQ um, part of the story, but just because there aren't very many books written by Church of Christ raised people that share so well um, what it's like to grow up in the Church of Christ. It's kind of nostalgic and and loving um, towards that tradition. Sally Gary is still in the Church of Christ and just loves, loves, loves the tradition that she grew up with. The Church of Christ part of me just loved those stories and, and reading um, basically a book from a perspective that I know really well. Okay, book number two, asterisk section, Jesus and John Wayne by Kristen Kobes Dume. Um, who should read this? Evangelicals who think the current incarnation of the American church is what things looked like in 1940. Spoiler, uh, it's different. Things have changed. Asterisk number three, The Making of Biblical Womanhood by Beth Ellison Barr. Who should read this? Evangelicals who think the current incarnation of the American church is what things looked like in 1140. Spoiler, uh, it's, it has also changed a little bit. Okay, we just finished, uh, of course, reading Faith After Doubt by Brian McLaren. Who should read this? Doubters. People who have doubts so strong um, that they would uh, come to identify with them. Uh, the next one, uh, we didn't get to cover, um, but I, I really enjoyed this book, Reading While Black by uh, Esau McCauley, who should read this, American Christians Who Were Churched in a Sea of Whiteness. I am guilty of this. The book is uh, basically saying not everybody reads the Bible the same way. Um, here is Here are some things that the black, the American black church has brought to scripture. All right, next in the asterisk section, Torn by Justin Lee. Um, and who should read this? Those who are afraid to fall down the slippery slope of sexual immorality if they budge an inch, but who wish that the only protection against that didn't involve bashing gay people over the head. There you go. You should read that book if that's you. And final asterisk, What If Jesus Was Serious by Sky Jatani. People who like short books and simple illustrations, but nevertheless deep biblical truth should read this book okay final section the just for me that i i loved but i it's okay if you don't okay the first just for me born a crime by trevor noah why is this just for me i really like comedy and comedians i like south africa for two strange reasons one is that i speak flemish which is a dialect of dutch and in South Africa, there's a, one of the languages spoken there is Afrikaans, which is basically Dutch with a little bit of time to um, separate from the Dutch uh, dialect. So I've just always been drawn to South Africa because of the shared language, which people who speak a language that is small will understand. But uh, also just a, I have quite a few South African friends my favorite kind of tea is from South Africa. I just like South Africa. Okay. Um, but uh, Boyner Crime, Trevor Noah, it's a it's his autobiography. Um, basically an ashes to riches um, kind of story that, of course, is uh, full of humor, but lots of racial tension in South Africa uh, in the time that Trevor Noah is uh, growing up, which makes it timely for now, I think. Okay. Book number two, just for me, Paul Among the People by Sarah Rudin. I think I've referred to this book a few times. It seemed more of an outside perspective on the Bible, like a um, more research intellectual kind of uh, view of scripture, but um, still very, very compelling and just help to read Paul in context. That's it's a resource to help understand what the culture was like, 
that Paul was writing to and what what those people would have heard him say or not hear him say that might be different from uh, what we think today when we see those those scriptures. All right, three more to go, just for me. Uh, I've referred to this as well in the show. Um, I read Love Wins and Erasing Hell back to back. Love Wins is by Rob Bell. It's kind of a poetic, artsy exploration. Lots more questions than answers, but it was very controversial when Rob Bell wrote it uh, quite a few years ago because some people took it as him advocating for universalism, meaning everybody goes to heaven no matter what. That's not really what I took away from it, but I thought it was compelling and interesting and uh, thought-provoking. The next book, Erasing Hell, by Francis Chan and Preston Sprinkle. I respect both of those authors. The book was well-written. I feel like they kind of missed the point. It's kind of like arguing against a Picasso is kind of how I saw it. Um, it's, It's like someone looking at a Picasso and saying, here are the 10 ways that that is not what a person looks like. He drew it wrong. So that's my main criticism of Erasing Hell, but still the conversation is valuable and worth engaging in, and the scriptural points that Chan and Sprinkle make are pretty great. And a final book just for me is Pax, P-A-X. This is a children's book that I read to my son. That's mostly why I'm including it in the Just For Me section. It's by Sarah Pennypacker. Um... It's a story of a fox and a boy. It's kind of an adventure story, but the background is a war. And so there are implications and questions of what violence does to people, to uh, the environment, to animals, to the people who fight, and to the people who are kind of left behind. That's not what the story is about. I mean, the, it, but when my son heard the story, it was a fox and a boy. Um, having an adventure, but um, as an adult uh, reading it, it engages with interesting things worth worth thinking about. That's 2021 in books. Everybody buy Jesus and the Disinherited right now. Buy five copies. Just like put them in your church library. Give them to people on the street. Um, give them, like, if people are preaching with a megaphone, just hand them one of those and say like, this guy reads the the King James version. He's old school. You're gonna love him, and and uh, give him something to chew on. can't wait for 2022 i have at least purchased twice as many books as i actually read last year this year so um i have an a a full bookcase just of suggestions that people have sent me don't stop sending me suggestions but do stop expecting me to read all of them because um i'm falling behind and uh just feeling more and more guilty about it so send me your suggestions not going to get through them all, but uh, it's it's just been so great to hear other voices, to engage with other perspectives, and then to share what I find. Thanks again for a great year. Uh, looking forward to another one, and we'll keep wandering together, I suppose. All these messages I thought you wanted to hear. But it only takes a whisper. Hey, thanks for listening to Following the Fire. If you'd like to see show notes for this episode, which includes links to everything we mentioned as well as all the scriptures, head on over to followingthefire.com and just click on this episode. There's also contact information on the website. Let us know what you think about the show and if you have any suggestions for future topics. Also, please give us a review on Apple Podcasts if you could really helps other folks find the show. And as always, thanks to the fabulous Daniel Wheat for the theme song and the music for the episode. You can find more of his stuff on Apple Music and Spotify. See you later.